man management you know being nice to people not necessarily but that's what the things you have to do in this kind of day and age and i'd say even in today's day and age you have to know the guys that you can draw out because you might be able to draw out bruno and he'll soak but it is what it is a couple man might want to leave the club bro that like, there's there's mm. so much soft youths in today's day and age man but like for me I'm a manager saying. could tell me in front of everyone i would obviously as a human don't hear it, but he could say oh dg you're playing fucking shit you're playing pony me i'm like yeah let's puff out chest and let's go again and next man might crumble and they're gonna get even worse so it's there's exactly. it's, it's so much in today's day and age man so much no 100 percent. but this is why the management from upstairs is so important because you create that right. culture in it and that's what i mean and and that's why with arteta like i don't know how he's managing these guys bro I don't know how he's managing them, bro. And that's why I think, yeah, for you lot, I think you're so close to winning but so far, a man. lot. You're so close to winning right, a right, lot. Right. Don't, don't inspire me, man. I'm, no, I no, you're I so I close. I can't dream about them thing there, man. You're so close, but you're so far, blood. And, and the this reason is why, it. And this the reason is why it. I say that is because the, he's got the raw materials, but the stuff that stopped you from winning the league the last two years, yeah. You haven't addressed it. Was not the players, it was the mentality, bro. Exactly. Because whenever you need to get the job done, you don't get it done. And exactly. that's because I believe that Arteta's got this aura that it's okay to fail, bro. I just think he, we got past that now. Like, I hear you, but I think we just need, just need some better dons, man. Like, I, w I remember being on your channel. I said, this season, going into this season, it's just fine margins. I don't care. In a nice way, I don't care about what Arsenal are good at. You know, take the good, make it great, improve what you're bad at, don't stagnate. For me, I didn't see the squad improve. I saw a good couple players come in, but collectively the squad didn't improve. I didn't see no curtain raises. And as much as people want to talk about how good you are at your best, it's also about how you are at your worst, which at times we're very terrible. Like it takes us a while. Yeah. Like we missed out by two points. So for me, going into this season, it's just about fine margins. And for me, that's why we're in a scenario where City have crumbled. We're not top of the tops and we're not running away with it. Like, and that's yeah. where I'm with you in like, that's what annoys me about the club because we were shit. We, we, you could, people can bounce and we say we still are, but we were shit. Now you've made us somewhat decent and you're flirting with success. I always say, unfortunately, this thing is, it's, it's for play FC. It's like being with her babes. She should go back to her base. She's lips in you. You're getting touchy feely. She says, go get the condom. You, try, you put the Jimmy on and suddenly the thing just going like that. It's not going up. That's how we are in a title race. It's long, bro. Like, and, that's, and even with Arteta, he's a smart man because I can't sit here and say that we haven't got experienced players with mentality. But you've gone for the young, impressionable kind of Achilles them that you can kind of gold, uh, mold into your own way. That's why, to a degree, you must have took a zero tolerance with Aubameyang because you thought, you know what, if he's taking a piss, what's these young Gs who have done nothing and thought? That's probably why, you know, Mesut Ozil, the first minute he started acting, like, it's crazy. I could never be speaking from experience, bro, because I know I'm not speaking from experience with that example because I don't even use Jimmy's, mate. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Bareback specialist, are you crazy? Like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> you guy, guy is mad, bro. I've got a lot of problems in my life. Getting it up for girl is not one. Bring all the branding. <laughs> Bring the branding to show, man. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a mad thing for you, lot, bro. I, don't, I just don't even know, bro. I don't even know because it's like if you lot don't do it this season, I believe that it's never going to happen. And I said that last year, boy. Like, yeah, but that's what I mean. And I think last year was your best. Um, last year was your best. Um, was your best chance, if I'm if we're being completely honest. I'll tell so, I know you got something for me. You know, you're gassing me, man. You're making me think it's not over, you know. No, no, it's <laughs> over. The league thing is over. Sure. No, as Vegas said, as long as it's not math, I don't look at the DTM, so I don't know, but it, as long as it's mathematically possible, we have to fight, man. Stamina and motivation. Nah, bro, man. because the, all that is, is you, man, are going to say, ah, oh, like, we were in a title challenge, but it's like, nah, nah that's you're not really asking, challenging, bro. bro. That's the media really asking, challenging, bro. Man can't just go off mathematics, my brother. No, nah, that's the media it's, asking, fans. It's, I'm on not on that. it's on momentum. It's on everything, bro. Like you said, when you don't play well, you look awful, blood, and... Five seasons, six seasons into the manager's tenure, you shouldn't be looking as bad as you look. And that's where I'd say for uh, one thing I like about Arteta is like, I do think he's a genius in in many ways. Like, I do think you're a very good manager. I do think you you can plan about what the opposition's going to do and kind of stifle them, what you did against Fulham, right? And I'm not saying you should have flew through everybody forward against Fulham because either way, as much as I'm upset about losing, they could have went down the other end and scored, right? But I just think the players are not given, con like the players aren't given conditions to just, try random stuff and the players i don't really see if it's not saka really players don't really say you know what, F it, i'm gonna go win this game and i don't think Mikel arteta respects I'm, I'm it's not really not respecting but i don't think he respects football at times in the sense of i want to do this inverted fullback stuff it's not happening the game's one of these typical premier league games let's just go mm -hmm. back to basics strikers stay up front wingers try score 
fullbacks bring a lot of width because it's no it's 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 no coincidence. If you set up a deep block against us, we struggle. There's that's why in the last two yeah, years, for real. The, yeah, the deep block and the, the mid block here, the 4 4 2 mid block, Villa, Fulham, Kilgore. We're going to move it side to side, go down the left, go down the right, but there's not really, and I don't mind that again, but there's no invention, there's no intention. That's why, why do you, the only team that's done it in Europe against us probably would have been Porto in the first leg last year. Why do you think in the last two years, yeah, really and truly, we've probably played our best football, or the more enjoyable games have probably been in Europe because the European teams are not really on that. I'm not going to say Monaco and Sporting didn't that defend a bit, but they were a bit naive. That's that's why I was, yeah. we're kind of sourcing. And the Monaco game was a case of what, what I think should be a problem for Arsenal, if anything, in that we're creating a million chances. We're not putting the ball in the back of the net. Like It's, it's, it's very easy to kind of mark out Arsenal's game at this moment. So well, Arteta's got to go back to basics. But this is what I mean when I look at... That's why I think it, that's what gives me the best... Like makes me optimistic and pessimistic in that. Sure, Liverpool are great, City are great. Everyone's gonna get better, this, that, and the other. But the last two years, before I've looked at City and it gave them, gave them their plaudits, I've looked internally, and you find yourself sitting there and thinking, if some bots, if we had a striker, if we won this game, if we managed, like the village. Were you game, one of them fans that thought that you couldn't do it while Pep was there? No, man, because it look, look like obviously it's almost impossible. But at the end of the day, you look at the first season, like what was it, 2022, 23, where we didn't expect Arsenal to be in that, right? If if Saliba never got injured, I'm not saying we would have won the league, but there would have been something. This last year, top six record was great. We all quickly realised it's the smaller games where we're kind of effing about. The two games against Aston Villa. Everybody remembers where Zinchenko made that mistake at, at the Emirates, right? In the second mm -hmm. half. No one no one remembers the first half where it should have went 2-3-4. And even if you look at this season, a lot of the issues that we're seeing... They've been there when we've won games, you know. Don't get twisted. A couple games throughout a season, there's going to be those. But when we beat Villa in the second half, when we got away with it against Leicester and Southampton, I was saying to fans, OK, cool, I'm happy we won. It happens sometimes. But mm. we need to do X, Y, Z. Nobody cares. You're negative. You're this, that and the third. And even that, Maresca, even where you look at Arteta, big up Chelsea and Maresca and what he's doing. But you look at Maresca, he's worked at City, he's managed Leicester. Arnslot's been a manager. So beyond the obvious, I'm not cutting excuses for Mikel Arteta. They're, they're, more, they're, they're more experienced than Arteta. Arteta. Arteta this is what I'm saying. How much is, is is that the difference? Because sometimes as I much as I like Arteta, Arteta, yeah, like as much as I, I like Arteta, Arteta, you're trying too much sometimes. Sometimes yeah, but just this is the it. point though. And this is why, yeah, this is why <clears throat> I don't think that he's he's elite is because I think that he doesn't quite know. Yeah. He doesn't know who he is, bro. And the thing is, yeah. The reason why Arna Slot's doing well, the reason why Maresca's doing well is because these are men that know who they are. Arteta's shown us no three different... Try things are not too Yeah, man. Arteta's shown us three different styles of football. So that shows me his insecurity as a coach. Because when he first came into Arsenal, he'd done the three at the back thing and he was trying to experiment with things. And then we saw free flow in Arsenal two seasons ago, playing irresistible football fell short. I think he needs to find the balance. Yeah, like and now we're finding... Too. And now we're seeing the Stoke thing. And it's like... How can we see all of these things from the same manager, bro? It's like, he's not really sure who he is. Why can't he find a happy medium of all of them? I just think it's about going to the next level. Because for me, I think this season, we ain't been good defensively. If you combine all of them, that's how you go to the next level, bro. I think from what I've seen by him, you like inverted fullbacks. You like to press. You like to have specialists in certain roles. I do think there's different gears to your game. But this is where I think the experience, sometimes there's climates to do stuff. And like, obviously, you know, like, Teams, there'll be an injury and there's a short-term fix. You might be able to do it for two, three games. We make these short-term fixes, long-term things. And then we're wondering why we've not got over the line. Like, I don't want, I don't think Kai Havertz should be scapegoated at Arsenal. We can talk about improving on him and whatnot, but mm. I'm at the point, you didn't buy yourself. You didn't fuck mm. up that side in yourself. We've got as much blood from that stone as possible. Some Arsenal fans, and as much as they're saying sign a striker, some Arsenal fans are saying, don't sign a striker, we've got Kai Havertz. This is why we get in these scenarios, and that's something we've done as a club. Giroud was a quality player. We could do with Giroud now, mm. but there's yeah. a reason he had a success at Chelsea. There's a reason he had a lot more success at France, because they made him a facilitator kind of brother. Yeah. Yep, they you his, look, um, you're not, yep, you're looking at Manchester Christians. 20 goals, bro. Like, this is the stuff yep. we do. And then we're surprised that we get close, but not far. And if we want to do this finishing second, third, being in around banter thing, top six, we've got enough for that. But getting mm. over the line, there's a lot Mikel Arteta has to do. And for me, it comes back to the transfer market. As a club, we said we've got one of the mm. smallest squads in the, squad, uh, in the, in the league in February. What, cha what changed September the 1st or whenever the window closed? And yeah. yeah, people would say, but we tried and did this and that. 
if Arteta tries to win a football game or Amarin and they don't, me and you mm. are going to ask questions. If the players try and they don't, there's questions. We've been knowing what the club needs and then the fans fall for this stuff of, oh, there's, there's no players on the market. Of course, I'm not saying sign players for no reason, but unless we're a prime Manchester City where they won the treble or, pre or, or, or um, you know, Real Madrid, there's definitely players that can improve you. Like, we yeah. engineer our own issues. That's what I said, Rance. I feel like we shoot ourselves in the foot before I look at, at anyone else. And that's what annoys me. And I agree with you in that, like, there's enough to kind of think you could do a thing, but then there's enough to just pull it back in. It's like you, we take 10 steps forward and then take 10 steps back. And we're just in one space, essentially. 100%. Um, big nice out behind, cuz. For the co comment, I completely disagree with this comment, and I'll tell you why. My man said, it, in my opinion, an elite level manager should play the style that suits the team. They take over and adapt their time over. I don't think so. The reason why <clears throat> is because. As a manager, yeah, how do you know, because your, your job as a, a coach, yeah, is to build a squad to win. How do you know that you're keeping the right players and get rid of the right players if you don't implement your system? How do you know, how do you know who can do what you want from and who can't? The only way you know is by implementing your style of play and seeing who sinks and who swims. This is what Amarim is doing right now. And then that's what Arteta did when we had Socrates and then man and like when we was actually you could actually you know at that first point you could actually see what a man's doing and the players are letting it yeah. down. It's true, yeah, you're right. Well then, whereas with Ten Hag he didn't do that. He adapted to the players, and then he ended up keeping players that he shouldn't have kept, and then he added to the players he shouldn't have kept, and then you have a squad full of man that shouldn't be there. And you now someone I mean? else has to pick up that mess where exactly. like, you see the reports, there's probably, and I'm sure Man United fans probably only, you've all probably got three, four players, five max that you're like, all right, cool, you man stay. 100%, but the thing is, the rest, safe. if Eric Ten Hag wasn't playing that pragmatic football for the first two seasons, yeah, we wouldn't still have a Christian Eriksen at the club. We still wouldn't have players like that because if we decided that we wanted to play a high line, Nindelof wouldn't still be there. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you could argue that Lissandro wouldn't have been bought in the first place. He brought players, yeah. Well, you know what? I think he can, you know. I think he brought. All right, bro. Uh, bro I'll be a This left guy right, looks no, like he's right, running no, in left treacle, right, blood. Right. No, but not, but not in the high, not in the high line, not in the free back. Maybe, maybe at four, yes. At left back in the four, maybe. But if you see Lissandro in wide areas, you'll see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not in the free, not in the free. Unless it's a one, defensive one free one. thing, yeah. Yeah, because the only way he can play left back, yeah, in the high line is if he inverts into midfield. Yeah, that's the only that, way. That's, that, that's the thing because we were linked with him, and I, I, I kind of yeah. get why I'll take one him. But you're, you're, you're right. Him in 100%. wide areas, we see. In wide areas, he's gonna struggle, bro. So. This is why an elite manager has to come in and he has to identify. That's why when Postacoglu came in, he said straight away to Eric Dyer, brother, I don't care if everyone's dying, you're not playing, bro. Fuck it. You know them as they bro. And and this is what Mariska done with um with um Ben Chilwell, with Raheem Sterling. From the job, he said Gallagher. Sterling safe, man. Go he work said, in the yard. Listen, shop, brother. You're a good player, just not for me. You know yeah. them ones. You don't have to tell a girl it's not you, it's me, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know them ones. Brother, that's I'm not what looking for nothing serious him, right now. <laughs> bro, that's why I say, bro, listen, I'm not in a place where I'm not looking for nothing right now. It's not you. Like, you could be anyone, blood. It's just not you, innit? It's me, fam. And this, and this is what top managers do, bro. They understand. Yeah. They identify what they need. Remember when Pep walked in, who he rubbed out immediately? Oh, Joe Hart. Joe Hart. Everyone, um, everyone's like, wow, Joe Hart's a legend. What are you doing? And at the what? time, it looked booky because he had Bravo. But there was a method to the madness, slightly. But this is what I'm trying to say. So it's one of them things where you have to do it that way, man. You always have to, you have to outline anything in life. You have to outline everything from the jump, whether it's in your friendships, whether it's in your relationships, bro. To be fair, you, I kind of did that with Ramsdale and Tini. You have to well. do it, bro. Like you can't go meet a girl and say, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to adapt to her. So I'm going to be the perfect man for her at the beginning. Yeah. But how long can Definitely, you keep right, There's some man that definitely do that. <laughs> a lot of men do that. But the thing is, all that happens is when you're ready to put down, put your foot down. She's talking about right. Who's this? You're not the man. Yeah, I you're met. going outside. You're going outside. Yeah, bro, you're not the man I met, blood. You know them ones there, bro. Like yeah. this is why you have to let her know early doors. This is this is me. This I'm putting this my These I are the non. Am. As I said, the non-negotiables, bro. That's like, it, for better bro, or worse, bro. you have to do that. And the problem is, yeah, a lot of coaches don't do that. They adapt to the players and they scumbag a few victories, yeah, and they get comfortable with the personnel. And then when they try and do something else, all of a sudden they realize what works 
for X, Y. It don't work for Z, bro. Nah, and, that's, and, that's, and that's why, yeah, for club, like you said, you touched on it. Clubs, like, above the manager, mm -hmm. clubs have to allow man to do that. I can't speak on Chelsea. I can't talk on Man United with Amarin because mm -hmm. Ten Hag was mad himself. And I think Emre had to play a bit mm -hmm. of the political game. And, and you saw with Arteta the plays he rubbed out. You have to give the you have to give the managers the authority, rightly or wrongly. Don't matter how much this guy was bought for. The manager might even be wrong, but mm. you need to rub out who you want to rub out, utilize who you want to utilize, and keep it moving. And I rate all managers that do that because ultimately, if I lose the job, like if I get sacked for Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, whatever have you, I just want to know I did it my way in it. It's not because. Yeah. Oh, I boss my man when I had to. These lot want me to play the academy boy and this and that. That it's 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 a madness. Like, but people don't see these things, bro. Hundred percent. And even this this comment when man's talking about Van Gaal, it depends on the profiles. No, it doesn't because Amarim's playing Amagello at right wing back because he's got enough of the qualities that he wants from a right wing back. Even though he doesn't see him as a right wing back long term, he's, he's doing just, a you're, job. You're there. intelligent enough to do That's that. Obviously, obviously, like I see where the Rico guy is coming from. Of course, you know, with Amarin, there's probably certain layers mm. he wants to bring in, whether it's because he ain't got his players or he don't mm. think though, even the ones that are ready, he said are that ready he doesn't yet. have them. He yeah, said, I exactly. don't have certain profiles, so we're gonna make them. That's what you exactly. do. So you have to do there are there are little times you have to do one, two things, but it goes back to what Rance is saying, of course, excluding that. Bro, you have to mm. just puff out chest. This is what we're doing. You can't change too much too doing. soon, but it needs yeah. to be clear what you want to do. They 100%. weren't playing the back three. That's it, bro. So what you need to understand is the manager made it clear that if we don't have a profile, there are going to be players that we're going to use in different positions and you're playing for the team. So I don't want to... you have no to. Change. The market's not open, so... You have to, my brother. It if is you what play, it is for now. Like Van Gaal came in and he said, listen... We're playing three at the back and we're playing two up front. So if you can't play in the front two or you can't play as a wing back, you can leave the club. So Wilfred Zaha ended up leaving because Wilf couldn't play wing back and he couldn't play striker. So he left. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is what happens, bro. This is why we did well. This is why our youth team was winning everything at the time with Van Gaal. And also why we won the FA Cup, yeah? And we just finished out the top four on goal difference, yeah? With youths in the team because he picked profiles. Fosu Mensah was playing centre-back. He's a centre-midfielder, bro. Hey, he's playing right-back and centre-back. Throwback, back, boy. He's probably with Blake Brown and that still. Bro, throwback. he's playing right... He's a He was playing right-back and centre-back and he was a centre-mid, bro. But he fit a profile. You see what I'm saying? And, and this is why... Because we bro, live in a day and age where these players, obviously, there are stronger positions than some. But in the, in today's day and age, bro, half of these players mm. can play more than one position. Look at Saka. Like, mm. it's only been in the last few years that my man's been playing right wing. Arsenal fans mm. used to fight me when he was left back for saying he's a right winger. They're like, what do you know? I was like, I 